the, the methods for learning the Arabic language. There's a, there's, I would say there's a large inferiority complex thrust on the Muslim world uh, that are of the, the 80-some-odd percent who are not Arabs. There's this kind of vibe and feeling that if I don't learn some Arabic or a lot of Arabic, then I'm somehow deficient as a believer. Um, and there's, there's some fundamental flaws in that. Number one, um, the, the reality of Islam is there is a scholarly analysis and then there's the pious believer who's looking to gain guidance and be the best they can be. If you want to become a scholar, if you want to be able to reference and become a reference, the actual teachings of the religion as a teacher, you have to go through the Arabic language because uh, God revealed his final message to Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, who was an Arab, uh, great, great uh, grandson of Ishmael. That's for people looking to become scholars. Um, if you just want a really good understanding of Islam and you want to be able to be the most pious Muslim you can be, you, you need very little Arabic to do that. Um, I would say there's plenty of people who have scholarly knowledge of the Arabic language and they can tell you all kind of things about it. But there may be much more pious people who are more pleasing to God in their behaviors and in their way and even in their beliefs and even the principles they live by, and yet they know very little Arabic at all. And so I think it's important for us to characterize this in the right way. If you want to learn and you feel like that's your path, the only real way to do it is immersion. You have to, submer so you have to submerge yourself in a community of people and take uh, lessons in the traditional um, you know, Arabic uh, methodologies of learning about words and how they're written and how they're pronounced. And then you learn about the uh, actual morphology, how one root becomes many words. Then you learn about grammar, how words re relate to each other. Then you learn about poetic and prose uh, excellence throughout history. And of course, the, the Quran being the best of all of that, you start to see the eloquence of the language. And, and so there's basically six sciences of Arabic that one would study. And it's, it's a very rigorous process. I mean, if you have, you know, 20, 30 hours a week to devote to that, you could probably do it in two, three years max, um, depending on, you know, your level of comfort with learning a new language. People were created differently. Um, so, yeah.